Uh, praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. My name is Judith Angwech, and you are all welcome to today's session. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you glory and honor. We surrender this session unto your hands. Holy Spirit, come and take over. Come and use me as a vessel to speak to your children. I pray for whoever will listen to this message. Lord, I pray that the message will go direct and touch their hearts and open our minds. Lord, I pray that the message will open our eyes. That, Lord, whoever will listen to this message, Father, I pray that you'll also give them the, the thought, the desire to share with their loved ones as they are being blessed. Father, Lord, we know that devil is not sleeping, but whatever plan he has to distort the, the, the channel, to distort the, the internet, to distort and obstruct people from listening, to stop people from accessing the message, in the mighty name of Jesus, we destroy their plans. Father, we cover this message in the blood of Jesus, Lord, that, Father, this message will go to whoever it must go to to open our eyes and draw us closer close to you in order to do your purpose and to do your will in this world. We give you praise, we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray and believed. Amen. Yeah, praise God once again, brothers and sisters. I am so happy that we are here again. Uh, it's been two weeks since we last uh, came back on air, and yeah, thank God we are back here today. I don't take it for granted. It is God who is enabling us. And again, I thank God that even after we had taken three months, actually more than three months without streaming, and many were not even, um, some had even probably forgotten, but when we came back, the Lord still enabled the message, the message to move, and people were able, actually we've had even more views than before, if I may say, just in a few days. I don't take this for granted. I know it is God who has enabled it, because yes, like I said, we are coming back in another dimension. Let me tell you, there are YouTube channels where people look forward to a thousand views, one uh, M views, whichever number of thousands of views. But this one is a unique one. 300 is a very, very, very big number for this channel. Why? These are messages that are not easy to listen to. And the devil will block as many as possible not to listen to these messages because these messages are undiluted gospel. A spade is a spade. No kind of quoting it in any way. If it is sin, it is sin. You must get out of it. So many will fear to listen to these messages. And in the times we are in, ideally, if you are to see honestly, we need messages of repentance like never before. Why? If Jesus said, repent, the kingdom of heaven is near. How much more for now? That means it's already here. So we need to actually call people to repentance more than before. How about sin? Our generation is normalizing almost every sin. So what does that mean? We need to call people to repentance as much as we can. So this channel is meant to open our eyes and draw us to holiness, call us to repentance. So do not turn away from it. Share with your friends. Always look forward to the messages. The Bible says the heavens rejoice when just one sinner repents. That's why he said for me, when I see 300 views, I know for sure that out of the 300, there are two, three, four whose lives have changed. I, I, I've always told you I share, I preach on radio, and uh, every Friday it's on Unity. After, un after the, the sharing, uh, people get to call back. And let me tell you, even just hearing 10 people call back on radio and someone tells you, that message has touched my heart. It's a very big achievement in heaven. There is one who sent me a message yesterday and told me, Judith, I've been battling masturbation for long, but I listened to your message and I want to stop. I mean, that alone, alone brings joy to my heart, knowing that the message has gone where it should go. Someone tells you I have been aborting for years, but this is the time that I now want to stop aborting. So these are messages 
that will open your eyes. Let's go to our topic today. Uh, today I want us to ask ourselves a question. This question came to my mind. Oh, let me say the Spirit of the Lord placed it in my heart about two weeks ago. When I was seated and he asked me, Judith, why do you want long life? So when he asked me, Judith, why do you want long life? The first thing that came into my mind was our favorite scripture that uh, especially everyone who went through COVID had to, to, to sing and memorize. That is Psalms 91. Right from verse 1, we also know Psalms 91 is for protection and for victory. Now, when you go to uh, 15, 91, 15, it says, when they call to me, I'll answer them. When they are in trouble, I'll be with them. I will rescue them and honor them. 16 says, I will reward them with long life. I will save them. Why do you want long life? Why are we asking God for long life? The Bible says in, uh, again, uh, favorite scriptures, for when you're going through trouble, especially sickness. Uh, Psalms 118, 17. I will not die. Instead, I will live and proclaim what the Lord has done. Everyone wants to live long. That's why when we are celebrating birthdays, we actually tell people, uh, happy birthday. I wish you many years of long life, many years of blessings, many years. We keep wishing each other many years. Yes, we want these years. Now, that is part one of what I'm going to talk about. The second part that is related is, what have you done with the second chance that God has given you? When I ask for long life, when I'm in sickness, for example, like how I am going through sickness right now, I have memorized scriptures, I have meditated upon them, confessed them, sang them, put them on walls, you know, such that it settles in my heart that, God, please give me another chance. Give me long life. Then finally, the Lord has given you long life. The question is, what are you doing with that second chance that God has given you? This topic applies to everyone. Either you're in that place of asking for long life. Could be just normally, you're not even suffering. You're not even sick. Because, I mean, anything can happen anytime. So we need to keep ourselves, like I said, protected, proclaiming the word of God upon our lives. So protection, the blood of Jesus. So you're, you're, we are always in that state of asking God to give us long life to protect us. That is category one. Category two, again, or you are in a state of living a second chance in life. Very many of us, more than 50% of us, are already living a second chance. Some of you knowingly, others unknowingly. How many accidents have you survived? I'm not saying walk on the road and you've come back safe. I'm saying there is that very accident where you knew for sure that you were going to be knocked down dead. I keep telling you my testimony of the accident in Nakuru this year in January when I was going to Nairobi. When the bus lost control, two tires on the front. And when it lost control, it tried to go to the other lane so that it doesn't knock the, the cars ahead of it. My dear, there was an oncoming taxi ahead. It went and hit this taxi, scratched it into a, a shape that no one could ever recognize. I remember the people who were removed from that taxi were just, they just pulled them out. They cut, cut, and pulled them out. Everyone died. 
I, we came out of that bus personally. I remember the peace I had when the bus was literally flying in the air. After knocking, it should have overturned, but it flew in the air literally and then landed on ground. It just, la it just landed. It did not overturn. It did not sway to the side. Nothing, no, 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 no bending in any way. It landed. Not even the windscreen crushed, was smashed. We came out intact. The Lord assured me, Judith, I have showed you how much I can do to protect you for the sake of the calling upon your life to speak to my children. My dear, that's when, as I speak today, for me, I know I'm on a second chance. You know where you've been. Some of you have gone through abortions and it almost killed you, but you're here today. I have a friend who went through HIV. I know these days HIV, you take ARVs and you're good to go. But there are those who have gone through that, that other crude one that used to literally take people very fast. Others have gone through domestic violence. You has, we've seen what has been going on this week. That woman, the, the young girl who they poured hot water on. All these are chances you've been poisoned. My, my brother Jacob, I, I remember last year, this year, when robbery happened, this year, last year, thugs attacked him in the house. Jacob came out of the house, I don't even know, because they wanted the car. He, he opened the door actually to go and fight them. And that's how they came into the bedroom. With a panga, they were hitting the bed, trying to hit, he was with a friend, and then he looked for a pipe and he hit the thief and the, the thief took off. But I mean, we've, we've had stories where people have died just like that. So ask yourself today, why are you asking for a second chance or for long life? Do not be surprised. Very many people are asking for long life just so they can enjoy this world and enjoy the pleasures of this world. Search your heart and see. Why are you asking God to give you long life? Is it for your own personal interest? Or do you have God in the picture? Even when you have God in the picture, to what extent do you have him in the picture? Is it just for, I'm going to church and that's it? Or the picture you have is, God, I want to know my calling. I want to know why you have created me. Why do I say this? For 35 years, I lived without knowing I had a calling upon my life. I didn't ever imagine I would sit in front of this camera and give such messages and tell women stop dressing up half naked and tell women don't wear those trousers and tell women don't put on artificial beauty. I didn't ever know that. Why would I even imagine that? Knowing that in the days we are in, for any woman who has gone to school, we know it is actually trendy to have these things. So when someone wakes up and then like me, in my, in my state and status, and I start telling people, don't do these things. It feels very local. So this is something I never imagined. So a calling is something that you're going to try and dodge, of course, those who can. But it will catch up with you. So very many people out there have made their, their dormant. You have a calling. Meanwhile, everyone has a calling. Just that it's in different ways. We all have callings. That's why I'm saying, are you asking for long life so that you can act on your calling or you want it actually just to enjoy life? When you go to school and study and you're working, you have your children, you have your family, it's very easy for me to comfortably want to live my life just for my own interest and benefit. Judith, go to work. Judith, pay school fees for your children. Take your children out. Go for vacations. Have fun. We can go out. Very many people are living their lives on that level. 
They call it living ordinary life. Go to church, participate, and that's it. You don't want to go to dig into what exactly is my calling. You don't want to get into that direction. Why? You're actually happy where you are. You're not stealing. You can afford medical bills. You can afford food. You're not sleeping hungry. So there is a tendency of being comfortable and living for yourself and living to please yourself. Every calling, the Lord has put it in your life for his own interest and for his kingdom. Once you're calling, once you sit on it and you don't do it, that's already a gap in the kingdom of God. No one else will ever be Judith. We might be like the Jeremiah's of those days, but I am not Jeremiah. You cannot be Jonah. If Judith does not play her role or do what the Lord has called her to do, that is it. There is already a gap in the kingdom of God. 2021, before the Lord now finally put me in the field, I keep telling this story that I, I had to first, my parents were very sick of, ill of COVID, both of them. But at that point, my dad was dying. So I went to my bedroom. He was now speaking uncoordinated things. He had diabetes. Uh, he's gone now, but he didn't go because of COVID that time. So I told God, if you let my dad live, I will live for you and I will serve you. That very moment, that very evening, because my sister had called me, after about an hour, my dad stabilized, and he later got well. The next day, I went before the Lord. I locked myself in a room and said, God, I have now come to you in thanksgiving for what you did for me yesterday, but this is what my life has been. You have been so good to me. You've blessed me with a family, with a job, with friends. You've done so many good things for me. I had cancer in 2014. You healed me. So I am back to you. What do you want me to do for you? The Lord took me to Haggai 1, a book I hardly read. You know, we are used to Psalms. So when I read Haggai 1, I was very surprised. It's even hard to find it. Let me look for it. I was very surprised to get there. And uh, the Lord was telling me, let me be quoting it. How do you live in well-paneled houses when my house remains in ruins? You have harvested, you've, you've eaten, you've, you, you've, you've uh, planted much but harvested little. You've, uh, so many things I'm failing to get there even. Some of these books I told you are not easy. It's even harder in this Bible. Let me just go find it. Okay, Haggai. Yeah, so you see the Lord spoke to me very clearly. And his focus was, I remember very clearly that scripture. His focus was, you're saying you have all these things, but my temple is in ruins. The church is falling. People are living in sin in church. They are living lukewarm lives. This is what it says. Uh, from verse, uh, verse 4, chapter 1, verse 4. My people, why should be live, you be living in well-built houses while my temple lies in ruins? Don't you see what is happening to you? You have sown much corn, but you have harvested little. You have food to eat, but not enough to make you full. You have wine to drink, but not enough to get you drunk. You have clothing, but not enough to keep you warm. Now, it goes on and on if you're to read. So the Lord takes me back to, I am going to send you to the church, and you're going to open the eyes of my people, that the church will get back to the work of holiness and stop living lukewarm lives. Now, if you're to see what happened then, 
Because thereafter, that's when in September 2021, I started teaching. I started getting on YouTube. If I had not listened to this voice and accepted to move into my calling, the gap would still be there. So it takes us back. Why are you asking for long life? Right now, I am going through sickness. Like I said, this is another relapse. And you can imagine in this relapse, like all these chances that God keeps on giving us, there is a tendency of someone sitting back and then thinking that, okay, maybe now this chance that the Lord has given me, it's time for me to now stabilize my family. We have people who have gone through situations and wh when you're coming out of it, you're like, eh, you see I was going to die without building. Some would say I was going to die without marrying. You even, you're, some of you are asking for long life so that you can come and, and marry. I was going to die without leaving investment for my children. But the question is, where is God's place in this now that he has given you that second chance? Do you think that is his focus? Or his focus would still be on the calling upon your life to build his kingdom? Building his kingdom does not mean we all come here on YouTube and preach. Yours could be service at your workplace. But the way you do it this time around should change. If you are a leader at your workplace and you, you, you were a boss and you were corrupt, for example, and then you get through this trial and you're given a second chance, this should be time for you to go back and say henceforth, no more corruption is encouraged in my office. Even the people I supervise, I must stand up and stop bribery and corruption. The people I supervise, I might, I must be an example to them. Leadership is given by the Lord. If God has made you a commissioner, a director, whatever leadership position you're in, you're meant to be an example. If the office is crying, if your juniors are crying, if your human resource officer and the jobs around your place, for someone to get a job, it takes bribery. You have to be bribed for deployment, for example. Then when you're given a second chance, it should be a time for you to go back and say, God, this second chance is to streamline my life in the space that you have placed me in. If it's in my family, search your heart again. For many of us, there are those who are going to go back and say, this is time for us as a family to have a blast and enjoy life. So this time round, your money will be for vacation after vacation after vacation. Very good. Enjoy whatever you can enjoy. But number one, this shouldn't be a time for you to enjoy it in sin. Because this is a chance that you're given. If you lost it again, you're going to regret why you didn't use it well. You're going to use this chance. For example, if you were not a giver, God has blessed you financially. Someone has to use this chance to give back to the community. A friend of mine yesterday told me that on Sunday he went to A&E, Mulago, and found accident victims. He said the situation was alarming. Actually, he told me, normally when border border people come, accidents happen, when they bring them to the ward, the person attended to first is the passenger. The border guy is ignored on the floor until maybe this the passenger is sorted. Because they think the border guy was the careless one here. He said that the, uh, the one of the guys who was involved in, in the accident told him, please get me some water. He didn't even have money. 
Because they are dumped there without relatives, you know how accidents happen. So some of them die just because they don't even have people to attend to them. It is when you get into such a place that afterwards you're going to get a second chance and use it to go back. That little money that you have, you're going to use it to go back and bless someone in the hospital. Everyone has been given a second chance. You have aborted and you've been given a second chance. Are you going to go back and play around with men the way you've been doing it? You can't. I've seen young boys, especially the youth, we want to enjoy life. Every time something happens, and you see it's so funny. You know there are people who have the boldness of saying, eh, I have survived. Now that I've survived, I am going to eat meat. And then you'll find that from Monday to Friday, they are spending their money, pork, what, what, what. For them, they've said, let me eat my money. Life is too short. Yes, life is so fragile. And it's short, it's true. Things just happen. Things just happen. But listen to yourself. Just listen to yourself. Imagine your body is saying, because it's too short, I am going to happen. Because it's too short, I'll be hanging out three times a week. Let me go dancing. Others say, eh, ah, let me enjoy sex. Life is so short. So they'll just go sleeping around the way they want. Another one, you're given a second chance. Because before then you had no family. You had no children. So this time around, you're going to say, eh, ha. Judith is actually going to die without children. You're going to say, eh, I was going to die without a family. So because now this has happened, you're going to go back and say, let me just go, even if it's someone's husband, let me at least get a child with them. Are you listening to yourself? Are you listening to what you're doing with your second chance? Do you think you're fooling God? You're fooling yourself. You don't want to be in a state where you actually even promised God. For some of us, we promise God. We say, God, once you give me this long life, this chance, I will serve you for the rest of my life, like I did. But then when the time comes, we've seen people fall off. We've seen people go back. We've seen very many who have actually forgotten even the experience. L let's do a flashback on COVID in 2020 and 2021. I think for us, it hit us most in 2021. We saw what COVID did. We saw ambulances everywhere. We saw how school meant nothing. Because I think for two years, our children were not going to school. We saw how even going abroad meant nothing. People were not flying. Them that had money to fly, the airports were closed. They couldn't even go, say, for medical aid in India. Even the India you want to run to, they were, they were even dying more than us Africans. You saw how people died. People had COVID. And you know what was funny is, me, I saw how there were people who, you, you're on oxygen and for you're really, really badly off. And then someone else would come and they're not even on oxygen and they would go. Now, all these experiences, for very many of us, it opened our eyes. Even churches were exposed. I keep saying this. Because it's at that point that uh, our pastors, churches closed, and some of them could no longer manage. You could tell that churches were actually a business. 
It was nothing but a business, not something that should have been a place where we, we find hope, a place where we find help, but a business, a place where they get money. No wonder some of them had to follow and ask for offertory to be sent to them online on mobile money. They had to do that. Forgetting that people were not working at that time. So even the congregants didn't have money. But people had to do that. Now you ask for a second chance then. But look at yourself now. You have forgotten to do what God wants you to do. You've forgotten where you passed through. You've forgotten that wherever the Lord has placed you, even in that family, in that community, wherever you are, it's at that place or at that point that he wants you to serve him. Even as a student in school, he wants you to be an exceptional child. For as long as you're his, he wants you to be different. My dear brethren, this is something that is uh, a question that very few of us will want to ask ourselves because, I mean, it's obvious we all want long life. But get back to your heart. Is it about you or it's about the person who created you? Is it for your own interest or it's for God's business? Such that even when you're asking for the long life, you're not selfish. Human beings, we are so selfish. We have that selfish tendency. Some of you actually want long life so that you can revenge on your enemies. You're like, hey, they did witchcraft on me, I'll show them. I'll show them. Let God give me another chance, I'll go for them. That's not time to revenge. I hope someone has been blessed with this message today. Uh, please let's subscribe, like, and share with our loved ones. And uh, may the Lord continue helping us, those that... Uh, your calling, you've not yet accepted to stand out and allow the Lord to open your eyes. Please ask the Lord. It took me asking for the Lord to finally get me out of that dormancy and allow my calling to come out. So ask and you'll receive, knock and the door shall be open. Seek and you'll find the Lord. It's at that point that you're going to now sit back and do the right thing. Even when you're falling away, given the second chance, remember where you have come from. Remember where you passed. Don't be like the children of Israel who forgot even the good things the Lord had done for them and kept on rebelling. Remember that time. Repent and get back. There is no other time for repentance other than now. After this life, we don't have chance to repent. And it's never too late to repent for as long as you still have this air that we breathe. For as long as you're still in this world, it is never too late to repent. Repent, turn around, get back to the right path, and enjoy the long life that the Lord has given you. What will it profit you to gain the whole world and lose your soul? What is long life? when thereafter you're going to end up in hell. The long life here is very short life. Long life is eternity. Long life is in heaven. Let your focus be on the long life in heaven. And the only way you're going to get the long life in heaven is when you live the life here, the long life in this world, when you live it in the purpose of the Lord, when you live it the right way, when you live it preparing for the long life in heaven, do not be blinded by this short life in this world, taking it as some kind of long life just because you want to eat the food of today. Look at the long life, which is eternal life. May God bless you. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus.
All praise, glory, and honor belong to you. I cover this message in the blood of Jesus. I cover whoever will listen to this message. Father, I pray that let this message go deep down into our hearts. Let this message revive callings that are dormant. Let this message open eyes that are blind. Let this message open the minds of our leaders that they will stand firm and help us to focus on eternity other than the things of this world. Let this message, Lord, remind them that promised, Lord, that they would live for you after giving them the second chance, that, Father, Lord, they will get back and fulfill and do whatever they promise to do, Abba, Father. Lord, I pray that you forgive whoever will listen to this message, Father, who has turned away from you, who has rebelled against you. Forgive us, Abba, Father, human beings, we are so selfish. We want things for ourselves. We don't want to look at your interest, oh God. Have mercy upon us and forgive us. That, Father, this message will turn our lives around. Lord, I pray that the message will reach wherever it has to reach. Every power of darkness, every spirit that blocks these messages from touching our lives, from reaching out to your children, we consume them by the power and the blood of Jesus. Take over, Abba, Father. Let your name be lifted up, be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed and believed. Amen. Please subscribe, like, and share. May God bless you.